Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this Invest 99L discussion for August 31st, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from the Weather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest the Weather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. Happy last day of August to you guys. And for today, we're going to be talking about Invest 99L. Um, another video, my other upload for today will be Invest 90L. These two systems are close to the United States, okay, especially 90L, which is actually developing right off the southeast coast. Um, but as for 99L, it is in the Caribbean. Um, it could, its future track could even be towards Mexico and Central America, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. All right, so here's 99L. Uh, it's a tropical wave all right, over the Caribbean Sea. It really hasn't changed a little. It hasn't really changed the organization much. Um, the models are trying to pick up on it, but the models aren't too, um, they're not, they're not too confident in this, but there are some good conditions for development and this thing could really get attacked together. So, uh, just over the Caribbean Sea has changed a little organizing organization since yesterday. Um, and there's really no closed circulation yet. Um, once it does get that closed circulation, this could develop into a tropical entity, all right, whether it's a tropical depression, maybe even a storm, but there are, but the NHC is expecting, ex, is expecting some more conducive development conditions and we could even see a depression form in the next couple of days um again moving at an average speed 15 to 20 miles an hour that's a little bit faster than what a tropical storm should be moving at but it's moving at pretty much um an average speed so any interest in jamaica honduras belize guatemala and yucatan peninsula should definitely monitor the storm it even has a high chance of development in the next two days as well as within the next five days but it does have a better chance to develop within within the next five days so as of how 99l is right now see if we can get maybe another so the latest update here has 30 mile an hour winds with 40 mile per hour wind gusts. So it's got some decently strong, it's got tropical storm force gusts, but we need those sustained winds to be tropical storm force to clarify a tropical storm. Um, pressure 1,008 millibars, which is starting to go down. So I think we're seeing some improvement on the pressure. All right, rate of circulation is 150 nautical miles, while the maximum wind is 90 nautical miles. So here's how it looks on satellite. And you might be thinking, yes, there is a spin, but the spin is kind of like enclosing here. It's a very broad rotation. It's moving pretty fast. All right, the satellite loop isn't moving that fast. As you can see, look at the timestamp. All right, the timestamp is moving pretty slow. It's the storm that's moving so fast. All right, it's moving at almost 20 miles an hour, which is pretty fast again for a tropical cyclone. But this, but the center needs to have the center would need to be here, and we have tropical activity off to the northeast or just on the north side of it. It's got to have rain wrapping around it. Right now, we have a low, kind of like a low mid-level center, and convection is sitting on top of it which means we're not really seeing too much development here. But there is a there is a little spin, there is a rotation, but it's very broad and disorganized. And we do have a lot of convection as well. We actually saw another flare-up of convection right behind the storm center. So we're starting to see some convection flare-up, and that's, we're showing some signs of development. So taking a look at these sea surface temperature anomalies, um, as for where 99L is, it's pretty much seeing completely average waters. All right, nothing out of the ordinary. It's pretty much average for what it should be this time of year. Um, and probably for its future paths as well, up until it's, you know, potential Belize landfall, I would say that, you know, it's pretty much sitting right in the middle here on the Caribbean Sea and it's in some average conditions. So 99L could have um, some okay conditions. We're, we're going to be taking a look at the shear and dry air as well to see how the conditions are for development. Uh, sea surface temperatures, the actual sea surface temperatures are 29, uh, but if it were to move a little bit farther north towards southern Cuba, we're talking about 30 to 31 Celsius, which is extremely warmer. That's like near 90. All right, but it will be sitting in some mid to about around mid 80s in terms of our water temperatures, maybe close to closer to upper 80s um, as it gets near, you know, Belize um, areas around Mexico and Central America. And as for the current low position, it's sitting right at uh, 14 and a half degrees north and exactly 70 degrees west. So it's pretty much due south of Haiti and the Dominican Republic here. Pretty much, exa pretty much exactly due south. Now, as for the model track guidance, a lot of the models actually really bring this into a, like a westerly motion and southwesterly motion crossing into the Pacific. So they have a crossing over Mexico, right, 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 right near Mexico and Central America, they have a crossing over and entering the Pacific, uh, really not, you know, causing a threat to the United States. So that's possible. All right. Here's a G, 
e or new GEFS model tracks. Um, as you can see, they have it bringing due west, not really a threat to the mainland United States, but it could be heading towards, you know, again, you know, Jamaica and Mexico, Central America could be in the, in the path to this as well. All right. Now the GEPS model tracks getting some new 12Z data in for these. Um, and I just set, set this up a few minutes ago, so it's amazing we're getting new data in right now. Um, you can see moving in a westerly motion and then kind of breaking off, maybe moving southwesterly, or maybe you continue to move in a westerly motion towards Mexico and Central America. All right, but none of the models are really having us gain too much strength. All right, so obviously that's a positive. Um, but when we look at the model intensity guidance, as you can see, a lot of models make it, you know, like somewhat of a tropical storm where it's weak or maybe even a stronger tropical storm. And a couple of models do make it a category two, maybe even three. I mean, one model makes it a four, all right, which is kind of a little bit outrageous for now. But again, a good chunk of the models, a good 85, 90% of the models do make it a tropical storm. And that's what it's most likely to be. Either that or it, it would be a tropical depression would be the next uh, next thing. So looking at the ship's diagnostic message here with the G GFS model, you see the wind shear will actually be going down over time. So it's remaining 14, 15 knots right now, which is holding pretty steady. Um, but then over the next couple of days and even over the next few days, look at this, wind shear drops to nothing. Now, who knows where it could be within the next 84 hours, 96 hours, which is where we take a look at the models. Now, sea surface temperatures, 28, then going up to 29, even close to 31 all right, after 96 hours. Um, as for the storm speed, that will also be slowing down. We're going from over 20 miles an hour, maybe even 22 miles an hour, down to like, you know, 19, 18. Then it kind of plummets to around 10 or 12 miles an hour all right, over the next you know few days or so. And the heat content, wow. All right, I believe when I was tracking Laura, I saw like heat content well over 100 for like one of the first times. And wow, 128 for the heat content. So this storm has a lot of warm water to go through. Not only that, but it's that warm water that deep below the ocean surface that really gets that storm going here. Um, pretty much over the next few days, we have some very high heat content values. And now, I mean, this storm will have no shame in developing here. So here's the GF GFS model. And the models, like I said, like especially the GFS and the GEM aren't really picking up on it. They don't really have too much confidence in it. Here's where the storm is right now. The, the circulation or the quote unquote low, low center. There really isn't a low center yet, but that's where the X marks where the storm is. If you go to the NHC or the latest update, you can see that's pretty much where it is as well, right about there. All right, so looking at the GFS model, really not much. I mean, we see a briefly closed low circulation. I mean, it kind of merges with some other moisture, not too much. I mean, it just looks elongated, stretched out. It doesn't look too impressive. All right, and then they have it moving west and then southwesterly. Maybe some of its moisture goes to Mexico. Maybe some of it crosses into the Pacific. And who knows where it'll go from there. But after 96 hours, this storm will definitely be on shore. Um, whether it's Mexico, maybe Central America, maybe even cross into the Pacific eventually. Now, a cyclone, usually when I pull the cyclone vorticity signature, I usually say that you can see the storm a lot better. Um, not really. I mean, you can't really see the storm that well, actually, because there's, they're really not making much of it. All right, even though the NHC gives it an 80% chance of development, which is saying something, um, GFS model, obviously there's only one model, we'll be taking a look at more as well. They kind of have its moisture dropping into the Pacific and maybe developing there. Um, but the NHC did give the development chance inside the Caribbean. So they're saying it's gonna, if it does develop, it will develop inside the Caribbean, if it does. All right, so that's something we're going to have to keep our eyes on. All right, and then maybe, who knows, something, hopefully I'll be in tomorrow's video, maybe some more tropical waves, some more potential tropical cyclones could be uh, spinning up as well. So look at the gem model here. Um, they're, you know, they're a little bit better at identifying the storm, but it's kind of hard to find at a times as well. It's actually right here over the next 54 hours. Here is 2 o'clock p.m. on September 2nd. You see it's kind of meandering around Mexico, meandering around Central America. Uh, really not much, not much to see with this. But we do see a little tighter storm kind of form in the Pacific, maybe by the 4th of September. Um, and then maybe a, low, a closed low circulation develops and something happens in the Pacific. All right, it's kind of like it was like the opposite of Amanda, where it formed in the Pacific and crossed over into the Atlantic. Well, this could be the opposite from Atlantic to Pacific. All right, with 99 now, because none of the models are really steering us towards the United States, which, in a sense, I mean, I mean, let's admit that's some that's some good news, right? I mean, the last thing I mean, ever since you know Laura and Faye and Isaias, I mean, the last thing the United States really needs uh, is another tropical entity, especially since you know the season is is getting so active. Now, looking at the cyclone of vorticity signature, uh, actually, as of right now, the 2 p.m., they actually have a little, a little area of lavender in there, so they're actually saying it looks pretty good right now on the cyclone of vorticity signature. It's a very small area, and like I said, small tropical cyclones can form.
quickly, but can fall apart really quickly. All right, so I think just batting, batting a little bit of shear, maybe even a little bit of dry air as well. All right, but then it kind of gets mixed up with Central America. All right, by 2 a.m. Thursday, it really doesn't look like there's much left of this thing at all. Um, until it crosses, maybe gets to like a like a redemption chance as it crosses into the Pacific. You can see some cyclone vorticity signature values, maybe six, pushing 60, 70, which is actually really good for this particular map. All right, then it kind of drops out in the Pacific, and then maybe comes on shore on the western shore. Of Mexico is a very strong tropical cyclone. So we might be watching out for that as well. That is certainly a possibility. And we are now just getting the Europe model, the 12Z model run, the latest model run from the European model here. So as you can see, the Cyclone Vortex signature, there's just 99L right there. All right. And as you can see, it doesn't look like there's much left of it. I mean, here's 24 hours. There it is right there. All right. Just some brief yellow, but no like orange, deep orange or red, like 90L here. I'll be doing a video on that again, in case you guys don't know, I'll be doing a video on, on that later today as well. All right, just a little bit actually, so hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that. But no orange, no red, no deep vorticity values to really clarify that, you know, really to make this thing tropical. Um, like I said, when it does, if it does drop into the Pacific Ocean, it goes west and drops south, um, kind of like an ocean like this into the Pacific, maybe it could develop. But the steering pattern is not really grabbing a storm and tugging it into the Gulf, because if it did, all right, if it crossed over the Gulf, we, it has some good times developing there because the Gulf is a good spot for tropical cyclones to develop. But when you look at the tropical intensity index, looks all red, which is good actually. It means highly favorable tropical, you know, cyclone forming conditions. The only thing I do see wrong, however, is the dry air. Wind shear right now, over the next, you know, now over the next day, maybe two. It's not bad. It's manageable. 15, 20 knots or 15, 20 miles an hour, uh, somewhere around that. But as for the dry air, eh. I mean, there is some decent dry air ahead of it, all right? Then, once it gets to near Mexico and Central America, right around this area here, that's where there's a lot more dry air. Even when, even if it were to first drop into the Pacific, look at this. Eastern Pacific Ocean, we also have some dry air hovering around there, too. So, I think there's a lot of dry air in the storm's path um, behind all these hurricanes that we've, had, that we've been having. Behind them, there's a lot of dry air forming and in the Caribbean, uh, in the southern Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche there, and... Again, the Western Caribbean as well. All right, it could be hanging to some decently high dry air or, or high dry air value. So that's not going to be good for this for this storm developing. And here's another look at the wind shear. So here's where the storm is right now. Actually, where the storm is actually located now, wind shear has actually been dropping 5, 10 knots over the past 24 hours, which is good. All right, so here's where the storm is now. As it continues its journey through the Caribbean, like I said, not that manageable, 10, 20 knots. But then once it makes landfall, or wherever it's supposed to make landfall around Belize or so, that's where the dry air starts coming in. So this did, or, or the wind shear, excuse me, comes in, as well as the dry air. So I think the problem with this storm is it's not going to have enough time to develop, and the models aren't really too confident in it. So this storm may have a little bit of a hard time trying to develop because it doesn't have too much time. And right now, conditions look good, but in the, in the near future, this may not have uh, too good developing conditions. Now, the ensemble base probability, when the NCP, the FNMOC, as well as the GEM and European models, these bunch of four models here, do give this thing a pretty good shot. I mean, 90 to 100% chance of development, or like over a 90% chance, all right? So they are pretty confident in this. And then, <laughs> when you look at the NCP ensembles, they give this like, like a huge area of 100% development chances, and then have it tracking towards the west. So I wouldn't give this thing a 100% chance to develop. I wouldn't even really give it a 90. I'd give, personally give it a 60 to 70% chance. Um, I still think there's a good chance it could develop, but it, it, it'll have to prop uh, with a couple of mini battles for this thing to get together and really start developing, but it, it certainly does have the possibility to develop. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Again, please consider subscribing and checking out my Invest 90L video as well that I did today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am Dweller Dude, signing off. Till next time, catch you guys in the next video.